Hey everybody, welcome to Tight Line today. I'm with two of my very favorite fishing partners, <laughs> my daughters Joanna and Anna Lee. And we're at a local pond in August in Georgia. Fortunately, we've got some cloud cover today. Mm -hmm. And we are catching what we in Georgia call brim. Uh, this one happens to be a bluegill. And we're catching them, we're gonna catch them several ways today and teach you how to catch them several ways. But one of my favorite things is fishing with my kids and getting to do this. And, Awesome. We're going to let them go. Bye, Fredrickson. <laughs> She'll name them. Hey, so thanks so much for being with us today. <laughs> What the heck? What are they feed these Brim guys? Brim don't always get this Got one. big. Look at that. There's a triple. Oh, oh we man. Off. But I'm going to come over close to you and show you what this one looks like. And I've got my pliers. It's always important when you're brim fishing to uh, have some pliers with you. You got a big one? Look at that. Now, Joanna, you can see the difference in the color of these two fish. Hers, um, Mine's a bluegill. Hers is be what we call a copper nose. It's got a little smaller black tab. You see that little black tab on him? Yeah. Right here. And the black tab on this one's bigger. They've probably got several uh, kinds of brim in here. She got a copper nose. I got a bluegill. There's probably some what we call shell cracker in here also. These are big, nice ones. Anytime they're bigger than your hand, they're as big as your hand. So what I'm using, these guys are using what we call spin casting, the push button. And I'm using a little ultralight spinning reel. They seem to like you better. They like me better. I probably smell a little more like a fish than you do. Good point. Uh, Annalie, you may want to reel yours just a little bit faster. Okay. Oh man. Just like oh, that. Oh yeah, I got one. See how that works? It's tiny! <laughs> Wait! Now that's hey, the dude. size we're used to catching. That's the newspaper dude. Yep. Hey, little and buddy. Here's what uh, the good George. sign of that is you His got big ones and little ones and middle sized ones here, and we're catching all different sizes. I'm gonna let you take it off because it's three. And mine are getting <laughs> hooked really good, and Joanna's are getting hooked really good. Mine got a little hole in it. Got a little <laughs> hole in it. That tends to happen sometimes when you put hooks in them. What the yeah, heck? Look at that big fat one. They feed him beef jerky? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they're feeding the beef jerky. I know one thing Huge. that told them. So, Anna Lee, what do you got there? It's a brim. <laughs> you gonna name him? Uh, this is Georgie. Georgie. She's gonna have to come up with a lot of names before this day's over. Yeah. They like to name them. I've already got Fredericks in the second. So, what Joanna has here is it's either uh, a copper nose or a shell cracker. The color of water here makes them a little different color than normal. Normally a shell cracker has some orange right around here, but it also has these spots like this. So it's one of the two, but they're all really big brown and we're having fun catching them. I think we might be a little competitive here today. Just a little Joanna's bit. goal is to catch more than her sister. I got two. She so got two, how many I got, you got? three. Oh, three to two. Mm -hmm. How many have I got? Two? <laughs> Two. <gasps> Wait, oh, I might. Oh. <laughs> I, call, I, I gave you the secret bait. Uh huh. Uh huh. Oh, man. You want to try with me? <laughs> mm, I don't think so. Oh, man. Oh, my oh, God. You got a nice one. What the heck? Look at the size of He's that. He's like humongous. Oh, that's crazy. He's got a unibrow. <laughs> <laughs> got it. Unibrow. That's awesome. <laughs> When bluegill start to get this big, they will get a little stripe over their head, or as Joanna says, a <laughs> Wait, uh, why? It's just a coloration thing that happens to them when they get bigger and older. I'm going to bring Gosh. this around here and show you. Come now hold it, Daddy. What the heck? This thing is really big, probably three quarters of a pound, uh, and they may actually be bedding. Wow, Joanna, what in the world? <laughs> She's catching fatties. 
They're... I am too. Look at these brim. <laughs> Gosh, this is so what much fun. What the heck? I felt a bite. It's not always like this uh, when you go brim fishing, but the beauty of brim fishing is they are a lot easier to catch than bass or other kinds of game fish. <clears throat> So if you have kids, younger or older kids, you know, a great way to, to have a good day fishing is to go for pan fish like this. Uh, that's another copper nose, I think. I'm gonna throw him back and help Joanna. I'm gonna get, let you get this guy off. Make sure you got a good set of, they're actually called pliers. Where we're from, we call them pliers. <laughs> uh, we do? <laughs> well, you probably don't, but I say pliers. I do. And, uh, Mm. Well, that's a nice one, baby girl. That's so cool. What the heck? I'm gonna chuck him back. So how many do you have now? That's four? I think it's five. five. She got five. I got two. You got two. You got to catch up, girly. Mm -hmm. Can I use a worm? <laughs> <laughs> they like me better with a worm. Hold it up and show them. <laughs> she wanted to um, get a new one for her aquarium. So yeah. <laughs> So what we started with today, and it seems to be working really well here, Joanna's got another one, Anna Lee just missed one, is artificial baits. Um, if you can catch brim on artificial bait, it's a lot of fun. It would be my preference, because you're not fooling with putting bait on all the time. We're just fishing with a little spinner. Uh, the generic, um, it's just a small spinner bait. This is a rooster tail. That would be a brand that you could buy. There's several brands, but it's an inline spinner, piece of lead, and a little tiny treble hook. And we've all three got different colors. It looks like Joanna's color's working a little bit better. It's a copper blade. I've got a gold blade. I think Annalise got a gold blade. But it just spins and you just reel it kind of slow and these brim eat it. They think it's a little small minnow or something. There's also a bait called a beetle spin. I'll show you in a little bit. It's great also for catching small brim. And then we're gonna show you how to rig live bait in a little while. We're gonna fish with some worms in just a few minutes. I don't know, but I'm, I'm sure I'm winning. Mm. <laughs> nah. I think Joanna may be ahead, but okay. what we're doing, we're throwing these artificials, catching some really nice brim. Golly, look at that fat boy. And uh, the way we're doing it is we're just what I call a chunk and wine. You throw this thing out there. Might want to let it sink just a little bit and kind of re reel at a medium speed. If you're real too slow, we're not getting bitten. Uh, if you're real too fast, we're not getting bitten. It's kind of an in-between, so. You got him? Yeah. I'm gonna try and take him off. And here's the other cool thing about, you know, Joanna's been fishing with me since she was, what? Like four. Four, knee high to a toadstool. That's what <laughs> we say. But what I try to teach her early on is to, to do it for herself. I'd be glad to help her any time, but I started teaching her how to take fish off and now she's she's just as good at it as me. She's not scared of them. And Until they like, bleed. Yeah, she doesn't like them bleeding and she doesn't <laughs> like the sound of the hook coming out. But ah. <laughs> good job, baby girl. Thanks. Whoa, <laughs> you got him. Man, yeah. they're huge. Look at the one down there with him. Wait, There's they're three trying to with eat him, him down there. They're trying to eat what he spit in a leaf. This is like mahi fishing. Ooh. We're going to try to. <laughs> she said, <laughs> <laughs> There was one or two with it, and Annalise trying to take oh, advantage of that. Oh, look at that, that bait. Look at that. Golly, this is so much fun. We're fortunate that we have good friends that have good lakes that mm. allow us to come to them. Did I just cross you, Joanna? So, Probably. if you have the opportunity to go private places like this, you know, really appreciate what they, what mm -hmm. they, the work they put into it, and you know, leave the resource like they want you to leave it. If they ask you to let them all go, let them all go. If they let you keep a few, then keep a few. But really respect what they have, and mm -hmm. we just so appreciate our friends that let us fish here, catch big old brim like that. So Joanna has another one. Wait. And Anna Lee and I are getting beaten badly today. Badly. By her. But that's okay. That's okay. She's sure? about to go off to college, so we're making it her treat day. Oh, yeah. You got it or you want me to get it? I told her when we changed a worm. I think 
There will not be any fish that count. And, and of course, the bait she's using, we only have one this color. And, and some days you find that happens. She, the slight difference in her bait and our bait is we're using gold blades. Her blade is a copper color. And yeah. she's probably catching two to one what we're catching. <laughs> and the little foil on the, on the skirt's a little different color than ours too. But really, if you're using treble hooks for brim, it's always important that you have a, a good set of pliers. It makes it so much easier. But good job. That's another really nice bluegill. So here's what we did with Anna Lee. I asked Joanna, and she was gracious about it, yeah. to trade with Anna Lee and see if it was her speed reeling or if it was the color. And I really think it's Daddy, the color. we're going to tear his mouth off. We're not going to tear his mouth off. We'll take him off the hook. So Anna Lee, first cast, catches one on this one with the copper blade, yeah. so we may end up... Can I keep this one? Letting them, uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> them trade around some. Or I may, Anna Lee likes to fish with live bait, we may go ahead and let her do that a little bit. Now why do you like fishing with live bait better? Because it likes me better. It likes you better? Uh-huh. The worms, you mean? Yeah. How, and you know this how? Because I catch a lot at our house. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but. And Lee, Joanna got her one too. So. so that means I can keep this one, right? Since you're catching them. But this one is smaller, Dad. Yeah, yours, this copper color definitely is catching them better. Mm -hmm. So when I come brim fishing with my kids, I just do a little box setup. You know, normally I'm bass fishing, I have several bass things, but. This is a really simple way to set up. You get some assorted bobbers, some little bitty ones, and some a little bit up. I don't hardly ever get any much bigger than this. I'm gonna get some weights. Aunt Joanna's got her one. <laughs> some uh, BB shot and, and a little bit bigger than BB shot size weights that just crimp on your line. Some uh, number eight hooks. And what I found is smaller is better. Even with the bigger fish, you can catch them on these number eight hooks, but the smaller ones you can't catch on the bigger hooks. And then I'm gonna have a little assortment of spinner type baits. These are little beetle spins. It's like a small spinner bait with a grub on it. And then I'm gonna have an assortment of inline spinners. This is a rooster tail. I actually like ones that are a little more colored, greens and yellows and things like this. This is a white, um, but Probably most any color will work today. It happens that the copper color blade working a little bit better. That's my tenth. <laughs> no, it's not. Yeah, it is. It is not. I'm... You're counting by twos. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see that. Oh my word, oh my look how gosh. big that one is. He's what? got a unibrow? Yeah. You, does he have a unibrow? Yeah. So you learn something new today that that uh, bluegill get unibrows when they get really big mm -hmm. across the top of here, so. Golly, that's a big one, Anna Lee. Look at him. <laughs> that may be the winner of the size I tournament right there. Look at that. What oh the heck? Goodness gracious. Oh, look. What is that? He, he's got something on his lip. Is that the lip? I think he's got... Ew, which what? means he got hooked before. Is that See, like there's, growth? Well, that's the beauty of letting him go. Nice. Yeah, he got a little something on his mouth, but he's clearly still living, clearly still eating and gigantic. I mean, look at the size of that. That's two of my hands almost, baby girl. George. George? No, I already named him George. <laughs> um, growth. <laughs> Grover, how about Grover? Okay. There we go. Go back. Grove, yeah. If you do have access to a pond and, and the owner says it's okay with him to do it, uh, one thing you can do is get some fish food. It's pretty inexpensive to buy at any, any feed store and go to one area of the lake and throw out feed regularly. And when those fish get used to it, this one has a feeder, but when those fish get used to it, they're gonna be right around that area all the time. And you can see how well it's working. These fish are hanging right around where all the food source is. Look at that. I catch two more and she catches two more. What, say that again now? I catch two more and then she catches oh, yeah. two more. <laughs> you catch up a little bit and then she goes back ahead, huh? But these are just nice and they're fat because they're eating this food all the time. Oh you gonna let him go? Yeah. Hello. Hello. It's like the little you fish gotta name that that one. on that plaque that sings something. Yeah. What's the... <laughs> the Billy Bubba Bass. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what, the other thing I'm gonna do for her right now 
When you so catch nice. a lot of fish, even fish that aren't big fish, if you can see that line, it's all mm -hmm. roughed up. And so in a minute, if you did get a really big one, it might break that lure off. So we're okay. gonna take just a minute and retie this. Okay. So Joanna's our oldest and, and she's been a Christ follower for a long, long time. And I always like to get her perspective on what the Lord's teaching her. She's actually going off to college in a couple of weeks, but uh, baby girl, what got, what's God doing in your life right now? What, what is he talking to you about? What's he teaching you? Yeah, um, so I just came back from a summer camp where I got to take care of little middle schoolers for about two months. And I had so much fun, mm -hmm. um, but the focus of the camp was that we focused on Psalms 23 and it talks about how the Lord is not only our Father and not only our Savior but He's also our Shepherd mm. um, and how just like a shepherd leads his sheep um, the Lord leads us um, and I thought that it was really cool to be able to set my mind in perspective in that that I don't have to be the one who leads people, especially when it comes to working with middle schoolers. Mm -hmm. You feel kind of responsible for somebody's life for two weeks. Yeah. But the Lord reminded me that I don't have to be the shepherd, but I only have to be the sheep that follows him and points others to him. Mm, awesome. um, and then coming home, just learning to depend on him as my shepherd more and more. That's awesome. So, you know, things we get all wrapped up in in life, we need to understand that He's got us, right? Yeah, he does. <laughs> we tend to all of us, her age, my age, her age, we get worried about things, but mm -hmm. and he is our shepherd. And he's got us taken care of. Absolutely. That's awesome, baby girl. Thanks. Thank you. Joanna took a little break to eat a snack, and I picked up her rod and caught one. It must still have her magic dust on it or something. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, this is just it's not a lot much more fun than this, catching them every other cast. And when you're catching brim and they're big ones like this, it's just a blast. And it's relaxing, you know, sometimes in the bass fishing game, we get out there and it's all competitive and high pressure and high energy. And man, this is just kick back and fun and really what fishing's all about. So here's, here's my plan. I sent them to eat food and that really is something to remember when you got kids make sure you got food with you but here's a trick if they're beating you really bad send them off to eat and then you keep fishing yeah sure and I'm coming back in the tournament. <laughs> you mm -hmm. see her you don't have to have a feeder you can just grab handfuls of food and chuck it out there and it works and you can buy uh, fish food at pretty much any feed store you got another one <gasps> and you see it works <laughs> Are you having fun, girl? Yeah, it's so <laughs> fun. <laughs> and so far, we hadn't had to pick up a worm. Everything we've caught so far has been on artificial baits. Man, he's hanging by a string. You barely had him, didn't you? Oh! He's doing a little cucaracha. I had a great time fishing today with Joanna and Anna Lee. It's a special treat for me. It's not something I get to do all the time. So I really, really enjoyed it. I wanna to talk to dads today specifically. Most weeks when I do my devotion, I'm talking to a wide group of people, but today specifically dads, I want you to listen up to something I wanna share with you from God's word. You know, dads and sons, that's a really cool, really special relationship. You get to hang out with them, be in the outdoors, do guy things. But I wanna to talk to you specifically about this dad-daughter relationship if you have daughters. It's an awesome thing too. You can share things in the outdoors with them. We had a lot of fun today in the outdoors. Don't look past that just because they're girls. But one thing I wanted to share with you today is that girls need to get something from their dads that only they can get from you as dad. Dad, you need to bless your girls. You need to let them know how special they are. Girls from their fathers need to get their significance in who they are. One thing that we do is we work with a prison ministry and we teach these guys in prison how to bless their children. And it's something that I've tried to do in my life. It's something that guys in the Old Testament used to do for their children. They'd pass along a blessing to them. So in my encouragement to you guys as dads today, you see your kids are blessings. Uh, the book of Psalms chapter 127, 3 says, Children are a gift or a blessing from God and you need to see them as that 
and you need to bless them also. So as regularly as you can, with your daughters particularly, tell them how much you love them, tell them how proud you are of them, tell them how beautiful they are, and tell them how awesome they are in your sight. Hug them as often as you can, and let them know that they are loved by you, their dad, because that's where they get their significance from. They get it from their dad, just like we're supposed to get our significance from our Heavenly Father. The other thing you need to figure out is each child is unique and they have a love language. My older daughter Joanna loves talking. She loves talking about deep things and so when I spend time with her talking about deep things, she feels loved by me. Anna Lee loves hugs. She comes up and hugs me every day and, and I give her hugs and, and her physical touch is her love language and so I hug her like that as often as I can so that she finds significance in me and in the Lord and not in other places. So my encouragement to all of you today, dads and moms, is let your kids find their significance and their love from you. Let them see it regularly, let them hear it regularly, let them feel it regularly. You know, we're supposed to do the same thing. We are actually children of God adopted. Uh, 1 John 3, 1 says, See what great love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. What an awesome blessing it is that I am a child of God adopted through the love Jesus Christ had for me and I need to find my significance and my worth in Him. Maybe you don't have that because you don't have a relationship with Him. Having a relationship with Christ is just as simple as asking Him to forgive you of your sins, turn Him from those sins, and asking Him to come and live in your heart and be Lord of your life. Hey, thanks so much for listening today. Okay, so we put on a worm, and as soon as she... That's 10. <laughs> as soon as she put it out there, and, and originally her rule was we're gonna start over with worms, but now mm -hmm. I think well, she's counting all of them. You. I know I did, didn't I? But that's a nice one, baby girl. So we're gonna teach you how to set up this simple little rig. The first thing you wanna do is put your hook on, and we're gonna tie a simple knot called an improved clinch knot. So basically, hold the line in one hand and twist somewhere around six to eight times with my other hand. Then there's a loop right at the bottom by the eye of your hook. You want to put the tag in through there and then it's going to create another loop at the top and you want to pull that line. Now here's the tricky part. Since you don't have three hands, you take both your hands and put the end of the line in your teeth to pull it tight. Just like that. Once you pull it tight, you just cut off that tag end. And then you take this little split shot weight and you put it three to four inches above the hook and then use a pair of pliers. I'm bad about using my teeth, but use pliers to pinch it tight closed on your line. And then somewhere between a foot and 18 inches, I'm gonna just put it right here so you can see how we do it. You're gonna put this bobber. Now the important thing about this bobber is you're gonna hook both ends. So you start with the bottom end, you just push out with your thumb and get it on the line. And then you hold the bottom with your thumb and push out that top hook. Take it, and it's a little bit difficult, tricky to do, but you take both fingers, that top hook, and then pull it tight. Then the bobber won't slide, and that's what your rig looks like. You're gonna want it a little longer than that, but that's what it looks like. So what we're fishing with is a worm called a big red. I like them because they're very hardy. They stay on the hook. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take him on this little number eight hook and hook him about three or four times so that the fish can't quite pull them off the hook. And now you understand why we wanna bring an old towel with us. <laughs> pull, pull, pull. Atta girl. Did he stay on? Yeah. Yeah. He's, tiny. he's a little guy, but he's a guy. I wanna Put him off. You want to take him off? Yeah. You got it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, and I don't know if you guys are watching what she's doing. I taught her how the fins on the back, if you'll just run your hand down their back and push the fins down, they won't they won't stick you. Or you can catch them by the mouth. I got it, yep. Got it? I got it. Throw Ralph back. George Clooney. George. <laughs> love getting to hang out and fish and talk about things. One of the things that sometimes Anna Lee struggles with, there's something you're a little bit scared of, what would it be? Storms. Yeah, storms. She doesn't like storms very much, but 
it's kind of cool how God speaks into her life, into her heart regularly. And what's a verse of scripture that helps you with that fear? Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. So in a storm like that, you realize that he can help you even through that, right? There's also a song that helps you through that sometimes. Mm -hmm. What's it and called? Total Love Point, that one? No, the one about in the middle of the storm. Oh, in the eye of the storm, you remain in control. And in the middle of the war, you guard my soul. You alone are the anchor when the sails are torn. Your love surrounds me in the eye of the storm. Your love surrounds me in the eye of the storm. And there's times when we have thunderstorms, she'll, she'll sit in the laundry room and listen to that. <laughs> <laughs> but God really comforts you in that, doesn't he? he takes, he's very real to you that way, isn't he? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you, he can be very real to you guys also. It's a great lesson. You know, and the Bible tells us that those are the lessons we need to learn. We need to be like a little child. She's not a little child, but like a child and, uh, and learn those things that God's going to take care of us no matter what. Even when we're behind in the fishing tournament, right? <laughs> and Joanna has hers. Next one. What is oh, that? Oh, my word. 18. How many? 18. Wow. Preacher count, we call that 20, wouldn't he? He's not coming up. <laughs> Here we go. It's a, it's a great thing for you guys that to one. see too. Swim, just swing them to me. You hear that buzzing. It's called the drag on your reel, Joanna. Daddy, I got one. Royce Rayleigh Easy Release. There you go. Royce Rayleigh Easy Release. Man, that's a nice one, Annalee. You got to do that. And, <laughs> oh, <laughs> and you're catching them on what? A worm. A live big red worm. Golly, that one. I'm hardly able to get my hand around that one. That's a nice one. Oh, we got a double. I, I need to thought I can get a triple. Where's my rod? Where's my rod? Oh, I got to get a triple. I'll keep them in. <laughs> oh, you're going to keep them down there? What you got? Is it a good one? Me? Yeah. Yeah, I think you got a nice one. Good job, girl. I would Hang take on, this I'll one help. off, but my hand can't fit around it. Okay. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Holy cow. Tell you what, day like today, you'd probably rather be at the office answering the phone than doing this. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that. He's fat. Working on homework. He is gigantic. He looks like a piranha. He looks like a bass. He does actually, doesn't he? So we're getting ready to leave. Who won the tournament? Me, Joanna. Joanna won the tournament. This would be my 23rd. But if we were going by weight, mine might catch up a little bit. I think so. Oh, look at the size. How beautiful is that? And if you get a chance to come catch panfish with your kids, wherever you live in the United States, you can catch them. We had a great day today fishing. Actually, just a great morning. We had a lot of fun. We're two of my favorite fishing partners ever, Anna Lee and Joanna, my daughters. If you have kids, get out on the lake with them. Get out in the woods with them. Just spend some time with them and make it be about them and not about you. Um, man, I love catching fish probably better than anybody, but today I was taking so many fish off the hook <laughs> I didn't really get to fish that much, but that's okay with me. I got to hang out with my girls and it was awesome. So thank y'all so much for being with me. Thanks for having us, Dad. Right, I love you very much. I love you too. Hey, thanks for being with us and join us next time.